Being on the internet should automatically come with a certain degree of caution, whether it is the things that you are searching for in a given engine, um, the result that you get, the people that you are communicating with, or even the persona that you are presenting of as online. It can even go so far as being the weird anime that you are trying to download through the family computer and suddenly you get contacted a week later by an Indian man who is requesting you? that you pay them a thousand dollars and then you have to explain that to your parents. Yeah, a rather specific example of something that may or may not have occurred to me in the past, but it wasn't a thousand dollars though. All that I'm trying to say is that the art of scamming has gotten better and better over the years and the results have been worse and worse for the people on the receiving end. And with such things as AI facilitating people's ability to falsify identities and information, it's only going to get worse. But one would think that with the myriad of examples that are happening on a daily basis, that people's awareness of what is and what is not a scam or at least the uh, viability of wanting to double check what is being shielded to you would have risen but it's not the case because now more than ever it is actually legitimate businesses that are scamming you and even worse when it comes to the people whom you have a certain degree of uh, trust or in the least a parasocial relationship i'm of course talking about youtubers and a youtuber that has been dealing with a uh, lot of scams as of late has been coffeezilla in this video he's going to tell us about a youtube bank that effectively don't let people withdraw the money i.e one could Call it a scam. Let's watch. Today we're talking about a bank promoted by YouTubers. It's oh. become a casino and users can't Ram get their Stephens. money out. This video is sponsored by Yada Save. Yada, Y-O-T-T-A. Yada Savings? The Yada Savings app. Maybe you saw a couple people talk about this. Yes, I have seen people talk about Yada recently. Hey, my name's Daniel. Um, my wife and I, our family has 18,000 uh, in Yada that we can't get out. Over $60,000 frozen up in Yada. $15,440.06 frozen in Yada. $7,270.60 frozen. $583. $98,000 frozen in Yoda. Buddy. 94000 give or take, frozen. $46,699. These are whole family investments. Okay. Well, that's enough to screw you from paying bills and whatever loans that you may have for months. Yeah, it's a disaster, and we're going to break down what happened. Let's start with the basics. A few years ago, Yada Savings advertised itself as a no-lose lottery through YouTubers, where you'd get a lottery ticket by saving money rather than spending it. Oh, it's no. called Gamified Savings, and some <sighs> took it beyond a sponsorship and bought equity in the company because they liked the idea that much. The most viral example of this was Graham Stephan, who claimed that I bought a bank. I decided to invest an undisclosed amount, and now I can officially say I am a small owner in Yada Bank. Now these videos are deleted, as Yada has become more of than course. a harmless savings app, and users can't get their money out. But to understand what exactly happened, Let's first go back to when they demanded an apology from me back in 2022. They made a brief appearance in a video called The Most Evil Business in the World, and for some reason, they didn't like the cameo. They said, quote, Given these false claims, we would like you to issue a statement in a video clarifying that your claim that Yada is a scam is false and misleading. Excuse you? Misleading. You're promoting yourself as a no-lose lottery. I.e., one, you are gambling with people's investments. That's what it implies. I've, I'm, I'm not going to call the people who are investing in it suckers, necessarily. But it kind of comes with the understanding that something kind of is fishy. A no-lose lottery, and then you eventually lose. Then you kind of scam people. And also, there was the inclusion of Graham Stephens there. Like, I obviously am going to put it out there. I have a personal bias against the guy because I don't, I, I generally just don't like financial YouTubers because a lot of them just shill a bunch of stuff that they don't even believe in. And he, way more than the most, like, on average, like, he is going to dismiss not just his audience, but also every single people that he worked with before. So it's a little bit baffling to me that people actually still put the trust in what he has to say. I heard him talk about housing uh, on an interview there. It was so out of touch. Anyways. 
Now, I never said that exactly, so I didn't apologize, but I found the next bit a bit more baffling. They tell me, quote, you could also conduct an interview with Adam Molis, the co-founder and CEO of Yada, if you wish, which I found odd. Either way, I decided to today take them up on their offer. Two years later, when I checked back in on Yada and found customers' accounts have been frozen and their website looked more like a casino than a no-lose lottery. On their app, Yada now offers roulette, dice, blackjack that you can lose money on. Now, honestly, I was shocked by this. This is the same company that's saying, play the no-lose lottery, regular lotteries are scams, they prey on innocent people. Now they're offering gambling. So of course, I reached out to the CEO. And he told me Yada is not actually gambling. Quote, we decided to pivot the business into sweepstakes earlier this year. Sweepstakes is not gambling. We worked extensively with lawyers in the space to build out the program. Now, pivot to what? What is this? A freaking EA is telling you that loot boxes are just surprise mechanics? Yo, dude, you don't have diarrhea anymore. Oh, what's happened? It's gone. What do you mean? It's now gonorrhea. Jesus, dude, it's it's not better. Now, I don't know which lawyer told Yada blackjack isn't gambling, but it's time to get your money back. All Yada is really doing is running a loophole. The CEO says you can't actually buy Yada cash, but this is a very sneaky claim because one way to get Yada cash is by purchasing tokens on the app. With These real tokens money. are pointless, except that they come with free Yada cash. Spend $10, oh, no. get 13 free Yada cash to gamble with. The more you spend, the more free Yachty Cash you get. Okay, I have to point out. If you jump on something like this, then something is awfully wrong. Again, that that is perhaps the power of the parasocial relationship that some people may develop with a YouTuber. That you trust them without even questioning the words. You have got to be kidding me. It's not cash. It's really just a stupid loophole to claim that this is all a sweepstakes and that blackjack, dice, and roulette are somehow not gambling, which is of course ridiculous. But most interesting, I think, is the admission from the Yada CEO that quote, yes, this is at odds with the initial mission to encourage savings. The savings-based business model wasn't working, so we decided to pivot. But pivot to what? To the exact thing your system was designed to fight stupid lotteries that waste people's money and you pivot to just getting people hooked on actual gambling? Is that it? It's like me starting a methadone clinic only to pivot to selling heroin because that's where the real money is. It's yep. utterly ridiculous and I told their CEO as much. And to my surprise, he responded asking me for help. Quote, you can make your own moral judgment of whatever you want, that's fine. But the issue that matters is that our customers haven't been able to access their funds for nearly three weeks. I think you can help. And I just wanted to read the last part there. It will be helpful if we can focus on that issue to help spread awareness and expedite a resolution. That is my sole focus right now. Well, yeah, sure, he's going to help you by exposing you first. And honestly, he's right. I do want to help Yada's customers not getting their money, but I can't ignore that Yada is a savings app that became a casino the exact thing they were fighting, and that's disgusting. Two, YouTubers brought people into a financial product that is now broken, and rather than address it, most of them have gone radio silent. Some are deleting their original videos. Now, of course, most of these YouTubers who promoted it had no idea Yada was gonna pivot from savings to gambling. But you gotta take accountability. Users' accounts would be frozen. But this is all the more reason that YouTubers should not be getting in the business of promoting financial products, especially finance YouTubers. I've spoken to a lot of these people. They all tell me the same thing. Oh, I feel so bad. It's not my fault. I had no idea. And that's all fine. But when people bring up your name as an explicit reason they got into this savings account, it starts to ring a lot more hollow. So my brother actually told me about it. I'm pretty sure he found it through the Graham video. Of course. Graham Steph. Uh, Graham video. Graham Stephens. Graham Stephen video. Graham Stephen came out with a, uh, a video. Graham Stephan, Andre Jack, guys that I like. Uh... Should we do a little bit of an experiment here? Graham Stephan's channel. We have a video. He hasn't uploaded anything since the last 10 days, I suppose. Yep, he has not. Still talking about housing, of course. Uh, should we see the like to dislike ratio right of this? Take on a mortgage. What are people commenting? 
Who else came here from Coffeezilla? <laughs> of course, of course. Lawyer here, you keep promoting scams. Stop deleting videos. Now, Coffeezilla's video is obviously not that old, but still, he has watched it and he could have issued an apology. Or at least just address the problem. As, you know, financial YouTubers? Yeah, this is the reason I hold financial YouTubers to a higher standard. Overwhelmingly, I find them to be more influential. Although, I have to say again, I don't hold them or anyone else personally responsible. I hold them all irresponsible for promoting financial products. This is not like promoting Dollar Shave Club, where people get a product get a and product, that's it. Yeah. If the company goes bust, it doesn't matter. Financial products are different. You are asking people to put their money somewhere. If in five years that goes bust, people are going to remember you advertised it to them. And if you're uncomfortable with that, if you think your bank might blow up in five years, don't, don't promote it. Shill a VPN and have a nice day. But if you insist on telling people the best place to put their money, you better not be upset when they listen. Yeah, <laughs> do the VPN in a list that is useful to a certain degree. Although, one has got to argue how much it is that they sell our data. The thing is also this. I do understand people dismay with physical banks, okay? They are not the best in the world and often they will not care about certain investment decisions that you want to make. As an example, my partner and I we will want to buy a house. The shit that you have to provide with, the amount of not even credit, like the history that you need to have is similar to like people who are asking you to have a certain amount of experience when you're applying for a job for the first time to which you're like, I never had this. How the hell am I supposed to have five years of experience in a field that I'm literally just being introduced to? It's a similar concept there and it really sucks. The... However, there is a level of security with banking, especially in the US, where do you... Where for many older banks, if something goes bust, you still have your money in tow. You can still have access to it. However, when you have like a middleman, who knows what's gonna happen there? Who have access to your books? What is uh, the encoding that is uh, managing the different accesses? You don't know. If that goes bust, there is a conflict of interest between the parties. That is likely what is going to happen here. But anyways, uh, it's... Uh, I understand people's frustration with real banks, but it doesn't mean that the other ones that are just online and or are inevitably their sweepstakes uh, are better. By the way, as I was editing this video, someone released a podcast sponsored by, you guessed it, Yada. This episode is brought to you by Yada. This is despite the fact that currently withdrawals are frozen. And now I want to pivot myself and talk about frozen funds, which is a huge problem that goes beyond Yada and influencers. Since early May, many fintechs, including Yada and Juno and many others, have had all their user funds frozen. Up to 200,000 accounts are Ooh. affected, and it's for many reasons that surprised users. See, most people saw these companies like Yada as banks. Remember, Graham Stephan even said, I bought a bank. I just bought a bank. But this isn't quite accurate. These are fintech companies, not banks. They're not holding anyone's money. They're not FDIC insured. They have a bank they work with that is FDIC insured, and yes. that's where your money is sent to. In this case, the main bank is called Evolve. Normally, this distinction doesn't matter, but when things go wrong, it makes all the difference. So does the distinction that fintech companies like Yada don't work directly with Evolve, they have a middleman called Synapse. Now, I want you to think of Synapse as an adapter. From old tech oh. to new tech, it's kind of like your iPhone dongle, remember that? Connecting a lightning cable to a headphone jack? That's Synapse, connecting banks to FinTech. And I know I'm not exactly an expert on this, so I brought in someone who is to explain what happened because the next part gets kind of confusing. My name is Jason Mikula. You know, I spent about over a decade in fintech and banking, including at Goldman Sachs. So I have I have some experience in the sector. What actually has gone wrong here? So the sort of proximate cause was on Saturday, May 11th, uh, Synapse, this which is this 
technology middleware provider or banking as a service provider revoked Evolve Bank's access to what in the court filings is being referred to as the dashboard, uh, which is basically Synapse's IT systems, uh, including okay. actual ledger information. And so when Synapse revoked access to that information on Saturday, May 11th, Evolve functionally froze all of those programs by ceasing to process payments. Jeez. So Evolve's decision to respond to Synapse revoking that access is what led to users being unable to access their funds beginning on May 11th and continuing through to the present. People are saying, oh, it's FDIC insured. Why isn't that working? Yeah, so it is end users confusion is entirely understandable, right? One of the great successes of the American banking sector and American banking regulation is that you, generally speaking, don't have to worry about whether or not your money is safe. However, that in this case, uh, and it's, it's not the only case, has engendered some confusion for end users who see FDIC insured and, and read that as, this is safe, my money's safe, I'm gonna get my money back. Now, what is FDIC insurance and what does it do? It protects depositors and users in the event that a bank, bank fails. fails. Uh. A bank has not failed here. Uh, and so there is no direct role for the FDIC to step in. If Evolve had failed, the FDIC would step in, I seize see the fail. bank, uh, and sort of figure out the next steps. That's obviously not what's unfolding here. God dang. Right. So if you have money frozen, it is FDIC insured from a bank failure. But in this case, banks haven't failed. It's the in-between layer that has, meaning your funds are stuck until this is fixed. Oh my God. And now it's just an entire circle jerk of who did what to whom and who wants to admit a failure on their end. And people are never going to get their funds. Man, that sucks. But it's not exactly clear when that will be because Evolve and Synapse can't agree on who owes what. The founder of Synapse says it's all in Evolve's control. We are doing everything we can to release funds. Meanwhile, Evolve says Synapse's records are wrong. Quote, recent ledgers and data do not align with the actual movement of funds in and out of Evolve. Basically, someone is lying or even worse, doesn't know what the truth is, and this isn't a disagreement about a few pennies. It's $150 million being argued about. But according to new reporting from the information, such discrepancies were known about for at least two years before the revoked dashboard and Synapse's bankruptcy. Meaning this yeah. could have been avoided, but it wasn't. Leaving a bankruptcy trustee to pick up the pieces and hundreds of thousands of accounts frozen. And we don't know who owes who what or when we'll find out. But all I have to say is, who cares? People need their money back. They were told these fintech programs were safe. Now they're stuck. Look, after talking to the people affected, I get it. Banking is complicated, especially as I spoke to Jason, that became super clear. But historically, this hasn't stopped us from helping the elite when complex banking Close. problems come up. Remember Silicon Valley Bank? And look, I know it's a different story, but back then we moved heaven and earth to make sure startup founders got their money back beyond the FDIC insurance limit. Out of concern for the rich and powerful, we bent the rules. And all I'm saying is I get that this is also not a traditional FDIC insurance case, but dare I say we give regular Americans the same level of urgency and empathy we gave to Silicon Valley founders when we decided to bend the rules for them. It's been- I want to argue that somebody out there has already armed themselves to the teeth with lawyers who found some legal loopholes that allowed them to amass all that wealth. It's certain, like this has to be planned. It's like when you have to file for your taxes or your earnings, like you can do that quarterly or you can do that yearly. Like, these things are planned. They are seen in advance. Like <laughs> ain't no way that this just happened. In three weeks with no end in sight and these people have mortgages to pay, taxes, bills, and quibbling about the middleman or the bank whose fault it is, is to miss the point. Trust me, there's plenty of blame to go around in this story. But for the immediate future, let's focus on getting these people their money back before they're punished for something that isn't their fault. Because time is of the essence. Even if these people eventually get their money back, the win matters just as much as people with frozen accounts told me. 
I mean, it means everything to me. I, you know, I, I have, I wasn't able to pay rent for this month. I wasn't able to pay my bills. I quit my job. I quit my career to go into business for my family and my savings is my, uh, my safety net for doing that, for making such a crazy decision. So it means a lot. We really have no safety net. I mean, even if that money's not gone, it's gone for us for now. My wife and I have been saving for our first home. If this takes uh, months, years to drag out, it's going to delay our home. I've uh, been saving essentially for three to four years and uh, was saving up for a wedding and uh, to buy a home. And, you know, as soon as this stuff happened, um, that was actually the first week that I needed to pay off the deposits for the wedding. So, God, that sucks. Pretty, it hurt me quite a lot. And CEO Snubs did not respond for comment. All regulators seem to be pointing fingers at each other, of course. Saying it hasn't been a bank failure and it's not the problem. It's not the problem. Oh, come on. Ah, that sucks. Hopefully the people who got their money stuck there actually get them back. It's, uh... Be a shitty situation to find yourself in but let this be like a, a great way of uh, being aware of how careful you should be when even engaging in something that your favorite content creator tells you is fine even if said content creator is a finance youtuber god damn anyways guys thank you so much for checking out this video and um, just kind of wanted to spread this one as well just to make sure that people don't jump further into the scam as was shown there it was still getting promoted despite despite the fact that assets are still frozen <laughs> mad anyways wish you all to have a wonderful day hopefully you liked the video and see you guys in the next one bye